people ask me, how do you really tell if a machine's good or not? And I say, to me, it's real simple. The first thing I'm looking at is what kind of materials the frame made out of. In our case, at Chop Saber, the frames are all made of structural steel, the same stuff they make bridges out of, so that's a pretty good sign. The next thing I look at is how the base frame is constructed. Now, it's kind of hard to see right here, but, but we have a base frame that just came out of the welding shop, and so we can see it in its naked state. So let's go take a look at that frame. Wow, this frame looks magnificent. You know, the first thing I notice is it's all structural steel. I don't see any aluminum pieces. These machine frames are all steel. Uh, if you look at the quality of the wells, they're just impeccable. Um, you know, a weld is a welder's signature, and you can tell that, that our welders are really proud of, of their trade. Also, if you notice the gantry, it, that's all tubular steel, that's all welded. It, we've even put pads on the bottom of the gantry so that we, we machine those and those become machine mating surfaces when the other frame members are put together. Now let's go back and talk about the rest of the frame components. All right, the other frame components actually are the uprights that support the gantry and the gantry itself. And we saw that gantry weldment right out of the welding shop, it's all steel. Now, attached to the gantry, you can see these precision contour guide rails. You'll also find those in the Y-axis and the Z-axis. And you'll also notice these ball screws. We use ball screws in, in, in all the axes. And you know something that I look for when I look at one of these machines is are those really precision ball screws? You know, there are some companies that use lead screws. Well, lead screws are much, much uh, less accurate and a whole lot cheaper, but Shop Saber doesn't cut corners in that. Now, let's go look at what actually makes the machine move. Now, what really makes everything move are the motors, and we use the largest motors in, in our class. Now, while we're talking about motors, let's actually talk about spindles. This is an HSD spindle. It's air-cooled. It doesn't require any water cooling system. Now, we also offer uh, an option of using a Porter Cable router motor. A lot of people like that. Now, let's move over and talk about the machine control, because that's really what makes all this machine motion work. You know, the most important part of machine motion is actually the machine controller. And let me tell you about the, the Shop Saver router controller. We basically started with an architecture that's really robust for machine control. We built on that a user interface that made it easy to run the machine. So you don't have to be an engineer to figure out how to do this. Now, that actual, actually all of the buttons are on a single screen, so you don't have to flip around and, and, and do anything like that. Now, to display that user interface, we actually display it on a window screen. The controller is separate from Windows, it's a standalone controller, but to make it easy to use, we actually display the operation screen in Windows. Then that gives us the ability to run software on the machine control as well as connect to networks. So it creates a really, really robust system and it's real simple to use. In fact, you can run your VCAR Pro on here if, if you wanted to. Now, let's go over and look at the table system that we put on this machine. You know, one of the things I like the most about this machine is the table and the size of the table. You know, we call this a Shop Saber 23, and you think it's a two foot by three foot table, it's a lot bigger than that. It's actually 30 inches in X and 40 in Y, and that's, you, you've got that much work envelope to cut, so you can cut a whole lot bigger pieces than a two foot by three foot. Now, this table is actually uh, our T-slot variety of the table, so you have T-slots mounted, and what you can't really see is there's a steel plate underneath that. So these T-slots are actually screwed to a steel plate. All right. Now, there's one other thing that's kind of table related, and that has to do with adding a fourth axis turner attachment on it. If you notice, when we engineered the gantry, we stuck it out further. That lets the spindle come out here. That gives us the ability to put a fourth axis turning in here, and then I can turn large diameter things. So that's a tremendous design feature. Now, let's make something on this machine. You know, VCAR Pro, the new version 8.5, has a new feature that I think is phenomenal. It has the ability to actually tool path a contoured mold or molding. So you could actually create any shape molding you want to draw and it'll follow a contour. Um, but I want to apply that. I actually want to use that technique to create an MDF door. Now remember, an MDF door is trying to simulate the look of a five-piece race panel door like solid wood. So I want to emulate that. Now, so the first thing I'm going to do is, is, is tool path it, but let's go through and I'll show you how I set this up. Okay, I started out and I defined the blank. And I said the blank was 18 by 22. It's three quarters thick and we're touching off to the top. So that's the first thing we did. And that's what this represents right here. 
And you know, one, one thing that probably makes this easier also is let's just say the origin's a center. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, put this on the table. We're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna tape this down on the table and we're gonna mark the center and we're gonna set that as the XY origin and then it has to line up, all right? All right, now let's look at some geometry here. First off, this is going to be the outline of the door, so we'll cut that out in the end. Okay, this represents the actual cross section of the door, so or the molding. So here's what it is. Now, if we look at that, okay, this th this would be the top right here. We go across here. This is called a drop, and then this is a round over a bead. It's called a bead. Okay, and so then there's a little flat area here. Then this is just a radius that comes back out to the to the level. So that's very representative of what you find on MDF doors. Now you can make the door look anything you want, like anything you want. You just change this drawing. All right, we'll go back out to the outside of it, and then this is the actual contour, and this is going. This rep will represent the inside of it. So you, when you draw this line, make sure you understand that. It's, it's not going to be in the center. It's going to be right here. So that's going to be on the outside. All right, so what do we do now? All right, we've got that set up. Okay, let's go over here and let's go to this icon, which says Molding Toolpath. All right, we click that, all right? First thing it says, Use Selection. I'm going to select that as a contour, and I'm going to say Use Selection, okay? And let's see what else we've got here. All right, then it says it wants me to pick the molding, so there's the molding. All right, what kind of tool are we going to cut? To? Oh, one other thing too, in in, th in the three D world, we have to worry about where that volume is it, within the material. So, so basically, our surface is here. It tells you how thick it is. We want that flush with the top, so we don't want to get because uh, it's going to come up flat. Okay, then we we're going to use a sixteenth inch tool, but this is a. a happens to be a Vortex 2205, and that's a quarter inch shank. It's a, it's a, the tip of the bit's a 16th inch radius, and it's got about an inch and a half taper on the side that, with the cut. So it's a really good tool to do this kind of stuff with because it's got, um, they're real stiff. That conical part of the tool makes it real stiff so they don't break very easy. All right, let's just go on down here and let's click uh, Calculate. And we calculate it and we'll hit a preview and that's what it looks like. So it looks like a raised panel door to me. Now, you might say, well, that's not a real raised panel door because it doesn't have square corners. This looks like something fake. So, all right, we'll open this back up. There's a box down here that you click. That's this one, create sharp corners, and we'll recalculate it. We'll reset our preview, and then we'll preview it again, and there it is. Now, I've got those square corners, so this thing looks like a real raised panel door that's done in MDF. Okay, so that, I'm really pleased with that. Now, what else do we want to do? Well, let's go ahead and, while we're at the machine, let's go ahead and cut the perimeter. Well, that's going to be a profile cut. That's what this is, okay? I've set the cut depth. It's slightly deeper than the material thickness. I'm going to use a quarter inch down shear. I've told it when I set up the quarter inch down shear that the max depth per pass is 0.51. So it's going to do it in two passes. We're going to cut on the outside. It's going to be a climb cut. Normally, particle boards and, and MDFs uh, climb cut better. Plywood, uh, hardwood plywood, typically uh, conventional cuts better. In this case, we'll climb cut it. Now, let's do one other step here. I, I want to basically start the lead in at the middle here. Now, sometimes on your drawings, that won't be the case. This, this point may not be here. I'm going to delete that point. Normally, by default, this is when you draw a shape, this is what it looks like. And a green dot is, is where it's going to start. Well, I don't like starting on a corner. So what I'm going to do is hover over this area here, right click, say insert a point, okay, right click again, and say make start point. Now that turns green. That's where the cut's going to start. Okay, we'll switch out of the node editor. Right now what we're going to do is, let's say I want to start out with a lead. Okay, so I'm going to add a lead. I'm going to actually have it lead in at about two degrees. The length of the lead is going to be an inch. I'm going to do a lead out, and I'm going to over pay, overcut it about, which is really an overlap, about a half inch. Okay, now I'm going to add a ramp because I want it to actually start at the top of the ramp. It's going to be smooth. I want it to ramp in on that lead. And so the cutter starts at the top of the material, then it cuts its way in, then it goes all the way around, then it passes by whatever that overlap is, and it leads out. So that's going to be pretty good. So we'll do that, and that's going to be a profile. We'll hit calculate. Now, this is normal. 
The Car Pro, it says, my material thickness is 0.75, the maximum tool depth is 0.76, that's good, that means I'm going to cut through the material. And now let's simulate, there you can see your lead in and lead out here, let's simulate that. We double click, get rid of scrap, and that's what the finished product should be. So it's, a, it's an unbelievable, powerful tool that they've put in VCAR Pro. Okay, then our next step is to create the, the G-code itself. And since my machine does not have a tool changer, I'll select a post that doesn't have a tool changer. And we'll output the machine code. And we'll take it out on the machine. And uh, we'll start out at the machine with a setup. And then we'll run this. So let's go out to the shop and let's see if we can make this raised panel door on the router. Okay, now we're getting ready to set the machine up to make our MDF door. Let me explain to you the steps that are going to be followed in setting up. This is a T-slot table. You know, one thing that's really nice about this is those tables are actually machined with the router head so they line up. You don't have to worry about that. What I'm going to do first is attach a sacrificial board and I'm going to use a piece of three-quarter inch white melamine and it's real consistent in thickness so if this is flat, that transfers to that top plane. We're going to use that so that when we cut down in it, we don't want to damage the table. Then we're going to attach our actual material, which is a piece of MDF, three-quarter thick. I'm going to attach it with double stick tape because I want to be able to cut around the perimeter of, of the actual door. Uh, I'm also going to take the dust collection off. Normally, these machines come with dust collection shroud, but I'm going to take that off because that way you can actually see the cutting. Okay, we've got everything set up. Now, let's look at what we did. We basically put our sacrificial board on here, and we're holding it down with clamps. Okay, and then we have our actual piece for the MDF door. Now let's talk about the connection between the VCAR Pro and the machine. What, how do we know where the part is? Well, it's real simple. If you remember in VCAR Pro, we took our panel and we made the origin the very center of the panel. So I've taken my board, I've drawn diagonals, I have a mark there. I jog the router bit right over that mark, and then I tell, it, I tell the machine control this is the origin, and it sets that. So that takes care of the X and Y. Now, for the tool, what we do is we actually, we put the tool in, we execute an automatic tool touch off, and the tool comes over and it hits that switch, and it takes a measurement. And now once that's completed, now everything on the machine lines up with everything in the software. Okay, we're finished with our actual MDF door contour on the inside, and I'm absolutely blown away. I've been making MDF doors with a router for 20 years, and I've never seen anything this simple. And you know, there's no limit to what you can do. Whatever profile you draw is what you get. Whatever shape door you want, you can make. You could do this with wainscoting, all that. So it's just phenomenal. Now to finish this project out, we're going to do a tool change. We're going to touch the tool off, and then we're going to run the program that actually cuts the perimeter. So let's get that tool changed and we'll be ready to go here in a second. Wow, let me get this piece out of the way. That blows me away. I would almost bet that could not have been done. You know, it looks like a raised panel door. It's got the same look as the door you cut with expensive tooling. You know what I can do with it? I can make wainscoting. I can make any kind of top you want, any size door with a single bit on a, on a CNC router. Boy, I hope you enjoy this as much as I did. If you have any questions, you can contact us at www.shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching.